what's going on guys i'm back with another video today's video uh, i just got rained out it's like 2 30 uh but I, i'm in luck because i got a text message last night asking me if i wanted to uh go do a little side job uh i think it's welding off structure so i'm gonna go ahead and um head over there right now matter of fact we just got rained out just now everybody's starting to uh clock out so yeah man i'm about to go head over there i'm gonna be doing some uh structural welding so if I have any guys who just starting uh, starting out, you know, just kind of getting into welding, this will be a good video for y'all. I'm gonna kind of show y'all the basics about structural welding. So yeah, man, I'm about to go uh, head over there right now. The job is in Kima. Matter of fact, it's for the same guy that I did the side job. Uh, it's from the same guy that I did that last side job with. This is what I got welding today. Using 532. For the inside. For the outside, I'm just using 332. I'm just dragging the rod straight across making sure I catch top, top and bottom. You could do circles. Uh, I, I was just dragging it straight across. It'll still come out nice and beautiful. You'll have a nice stringer in there and that's all you really need for it to hold. I'm welding these pans right here. I'm almost done. Just gotta weld this right here. Might do a two beat cap. I'm not sure yet. And this right here goes on top of that one. And that gets welded all the way around. Low easy side job. Low easy project. All structure, no x-ray. I laid down the first pass. That looks pretty good. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna throw a 2B cap. I think that would do it since this is not really too critical. What y'all think? Should I do a 2B cap or what? Decided to do the 2B cap. That's one right there. It looks a little funny on camera, but it looks better in person. Just finish the cap. I got my 2B cap on here. What y'all think? Looks good or what? Just finished up as the finished product. So that I'm going on top of this right here, and they're gonna have a pipe in the middle. But 60% is done, so I'm done for today. About to roll up and head out. I just finished up. It's about 8:30. I did about five hours today, so I'll probably do another uh, five tomorrow, and uh, we should be done by tomorrow. And uh, I'll have me a nice little check. A uh, little extra ca cash money, I know, but oh, uh, another successful day. You know, I'm still happy to be out here uh, working. What's going on, everybody? Today is the next day. I am tired. I'm tired. Uh, I made it home about 9:20, and uh, I ain't going to sleep till like almost midnight, and it's five in the morning right now. So. About to uh, stop at the gas station, uh, fill my machine up, and uh, put some diesel in my truck and get something else, a few more things. So, but today I'll be answering some of y'all questions that I've seen. I've been getting a lot of comments, so I'm gonna take the time today to answer everybody's questions that I see. So, I hope y'all enjoy the video, man. Picture how I was late for work today. I should have woke up earlier, but I was too tired. But uh, right now it's about 6:45. Uh, when you work for the plants and you're a rig welder, it's actually real, real chill. 
you know what I'm saying? The only thing you do is weld. So if they don't have nothing for you to do, you go to your truck. You sit down and you wait for them to uh, get something for them to, for you to weld. But this, it's, it's, uh, I love it, man. I have a lot of spare time to do other things. And when I'm tired, most, most likely around this time, usually I'll be uh, going to sleep for a little while. But I think my fitter is almost ready for me. So I'm going to give him about 20 more minutes. And I'm going to head out and I'll go back to work. But, yeah, man, this is totally different from pipelining. And pipelining, from what I know and from what I experience, usually, you know, you weld all day, which is cool, which I don't mind. But at the same time, I like to kick back sometimes and just chill. And, you know, if I'm tired, go to sleep and, you know, just, just take it easy, especially during the summertime, man. It'd be hot. But, yeah, man, I, I love working for the refineries. I just like how uh, chill it is. Yeah, man, I'm about to let my fitter. I'm about to go check with my fitter right now. See how long, much longer he has. Hopefully, he's not ready to within another hour. It's uh, nine o'clock right now, so I just went into the field. I did uh, one support, and uh, I also dry washed a uh, three inch that was out of squared. Uh, so I'm basically done for the morning. Basically done. And like I said, man, uh, rig welders work at a plant is totally different. We actually have a, a lot of downtime because when you get to these plants, you can only weld. That's it. You can't do fitting you can't do anything else you just come here to weld so if they don't have nothing for you to weld you go to your truck chill get some ac take a little nap eat uh what i like to do in my spare time is uh i like to respond back to y'all comments uh you know try to answer as many questions as i can and i actually had a good question uh by tommy he said uh love to hear more of your story did you go to school or develop the skill on your own well, Tommy, that is that is a great question. Uh, I actually learned on the field. Uh, whenever I graduated high school, my dad was a pipe fitter, and he was able to give me my first uh, job on the field. So I started off as a helper, and I was working at a shipyard. I do not recommend anybody go to the shipyard. This is the worst job you can get as a welder. It sucks, and they don't pay no money. But anyways, I was there for like six months. Well, I was a helper for six months, and I moved up to a welder. Uh, I started practicing on lunch break. Uh, I'll practice anytime, I, even on the clock, I'll, I'll practice anytime that I could. But in the shipyard, they only do stick and flux core and nothing get x rayed. So, but I was able to pick up a lot of skills of stick, flux core, TIG, stainless, uh, copper nickel. I was able to learn how to weld all that. None of the stuff got x rayed, so that kind of set me back a little bit on really trying to expand into making more money uh what i should have did i should have just went to school and that's what i recommend anybody to do just go to school get it out the way if if if, if you're just out of high school just go to school get it out the way and uh learn everything that you need to learn now if you're older you know what i'm saying i understand that we have to provide for our families then i'll just go to work then go to night school i think supreme Weldon academy does uh classes in the afternoon you know, uh, if you, ha you have any more questions, you can contact me about the welding school and I'll hook you up with one of the instructors there. Uh, but yeah, Tommy, uh, you know, I see you're an electrician and you want to bring, branch off into welding. I say go for it, bro. If you're working, you know, work work your shift now, then try to look into getting into uh, welding school. You already have one, one, you already have one trade which is electrician and that's great so you know branching up into welding will, will they make things better especially how the economy is now man you need to have a lot of trades on your system to keep on working but uh i say go for it bro go for it if you have any more questions you know uh, hit me up and i'll try to answer them as best as i can uh, i have another question and this is from uh where you at From uh, Dalton, he said, "Hey, bro, I just graduated welding school, and I want to eventually become a rig welder. I have a shop job right now, just doing MIG welding, but I love stick welding. Any advice on what I should do eventually to to get to become a rig welder? Thanks. Love the videos. Uh, you already welding, so you already got it down. You know what I'm saying? That, that's the biggest thing is to just start making money." So you're MIG welding, and that's great because believe it or not, I heard of some pipelines running MIG. You know what I'm saying? Most of these pipeliners they can't TIG and they can't MIG. I'm not saying I'm not saying not all of them can't do it, but I, I came across them who just do stick, which is all they do. Pipeliners just do stick mainly. All they do is downhill P5. You know, uh, but 
uh, back to you, Dalton. Uh, if I was you, I'd try to get into another shop where they do TIG and stick. Uh, I'm not sure if you're in Houston. If you are in Houston, they got a shop called HP Piping. I'm not sure if they're hiring, uh, but it's a good start because uh, that's where I actually I went and I was able to pick up a lot of the uh, skills that I know now because you do that every day. Once you do that every day, every day, every day, you're going to be able to master it and you'll be able to uh, move on. Get to, I tried to get into a shop to do tick and stick. Then I'll try to go into a single hand welder job. Uh, the reason why I say do this is because you need to be around the environment of welders. You need to be around that type of environment. Shop welders not really going to have that many connections compared to guys welding on the field, you know. So I'll try to go into the field a single hand if I was you. Uh, even single hand, man, you still make over 100k a year. I think uh, a few years ago, I worked single hand all year and I made like 120 that year. So you still make over six figures. So I'll try to go to a plant. Uh, once you get into the plant, once you feel comfortable being able to weld 40 inch pipe to stainless everything, I'll try to work on uh, getting your rig ready. Uh, now, if you have the money, I say just go ahead and get your rig now that you're at the shop. And you'll be able to practice and you know and and be prepared but if I, I i recommend everybody to do single hand especially if you're young just to get that experience and you'll be able to do p5 you'll be able to work, work on refineries you'll be able to work stainless you go a heavy wall you can basically weld it all and you know you want to be able to have as many skills as you can if you want to become a rig welder because some places they want you to TIG, some places they want you to mig it, it just goes all over the place but like I said, uh, Dalton, the key for you to become a rig welder is you need to be around the uh, more welders. More welders who are into welding, who have experience, who have the connections, because most of these rig jobs are connections. You know, you have to know somebody to get in. Most of the jobs that I got so far, including this one, is from me knowing somebody who, who got me on. So, and that's why I tell all the new guys, you know, uh, give it your all. Quality and production is it's about even you know that's gonna be your two best friends to securing your job but uh, I hope I was able to answer your question as best and I hope you uh, as best as I could and I hope you uh, have a clear answer you know it's it's about 9 10 right now so I'll probably take the rest of the uh, day to work on a few videos reply back to a few comments and messages I probably won't go back to work till after lunch because uh, right now they're prepping a three inch and they still got to prep it, cut it, take measurements and do a whole bunch of other stuff. So most likely I'm not going to get back into the field till about uh, maybe 12, 40 or so. But yeah, man, I'll check back in with y'all later. I'm happy I scheduled the side job and took it because as y'all see, I got rained out both days. So I was able to come in here and make some extra cash to make up for those hours missed. But uh, I just got here. Hopefully my machine don't run out of gas because I actually forgot to fill it up. So it might still have a good bit in there since then. But then again, probably got like half a tank because yesterday I ran it for like five hours straight, burning straight 532. But we'll see how it does. But this is what I got. So today I need a, I have a three inch pipe schedule. 40 so this one right here is going to sit on top of this and it's going to have these two supports on here one on the other side and i have to finish that welding this piece right here is going to sit on top and i'm going to go ahead and weld that so i'm going to get to it i'm going to keep y'all updated Finally made it back to the crib after a long day. I worked 10 hours at my job and five over here. It's like 10 p.m. Look how dirty I am, man. That's from laying on top of all that iron. I think it's time to throw this shirt away. I got too many holes on it. But uh, I was uh, everything came out pretty good. Finished product and I got paid today, so it's all good. I'm about to head inside. I'm about to go take me a little shower, chill with my wife for a little while, and then go to sleep because you know we gotta back, we gotta go back and do it again tomorrow. 
<coughs> you gotta wake up at four. <coughs> I have to wake up at 4.30. But anyways, I appreciate it. If you got this far in my channel, don't forget to don't, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.